For those who don't know, Limus is a YouTuber who recently made a video titled, How Not to Write a Victim of Abuse. In it, they said Angel Dust was a horrible character, and that he got them to stop watching Hasbin Hotel after episode 4. While I encourage this course, I have multiple problems with their video, and I plan on going through that today. Anyways, this will be a long video, so let's jump into it. It starts with Limus going on about representation in media. I don't think it goes without saying, but representation is important for any source of fiction. People of a particular group want to feel seen and understood, and most of all, not feel like they are alone. And that's why good representation is important. Regarding their point here, representation can be important. A character representing people can be an essential part of any series. And if people can relate to a character, it makes them more invested in a series. Sometimes I became invested in a series simply because I related to a character I saw that was part of it. Regarding what I have to say, though, representation is good, but it should be the most important thing to you when making a series. I'm not saying you can't have representation. By all means, if you want a character of a different race or gender than the norm, you have every right to make that. However, if you are only making a series just to make a character be a good representation of a particular group, then you're doing it wrong. What matters to a person who's checking out any media is the story. One way to tell a good story is to show a character with clear flaws who needs to improve. Why am I bringing that specifically up? Because their hate for Angel Dust seems to be due to his flaws. Angel Dust is one of the only homosexual characters in the entire show. His entire gimmick is that he's a washed up porn star slash prostitute drug addict. Already his character is just reinforcing negative gay stereotypes. I want to clarify that I'm not defending how Angel Dust acts in Haspen Hotel. I use the term flaws because they are flaws in his character, and everything Lima says about Angel Dust as a character is true. He is a hypersexual drug addict, and those aren't good traits about him. To add to that, if I were Husk, I would also feel uncomfortable around Angel Dust because of how he acts. But that's also my point about what makes him a good character. Instead of someone with no flaws, Angel Dust is someone with clear issues he has to work through. Again, he's hypersexual and constantly hits on characters, despite seeing that it makes him uncomfortable. He's also a drug addict who engages in self-destructive behavior. Before moving on, I want to mention that Limus' whole problem seems to be that Angel Dust is a negative stereotype to them. However, they look like a hypocrite considering they made this comment in the video about Hasbin Hotel. Hasbin Hotel is already a pretty controversial show for valid and unvalid reasons. And no, the show isn't bad because the word fuck is used more times than a drunk in an Irish pub. Isn't that a negative stereotype about the Irish? Lyra specifically said Irish pub. Is that supposed to imply that only Irish pubs are the ones to over serve you alcohol to the point you're constantly dropping F-bombs for no reason? Again, it seems hypocritical that they'll complain about Angel Dust being a negative stereotype while also using one out of nowhere. What's even sadder is their reasoning as to why it's harmful to have Angel Dust in the series. And call me a snowflake all you want, but when your general audience of the show is like below the age of 13, then I do think it's important for you to have good representation in order to not send a bad narrative. Not only is Linus' complaint dumb, but it's one of the dumbest complaints I've ever heard about anything aimed at adults. They seem to forget that series like Hasbin Hotel are specifically for adults, not kids. Hasbin Hotel isn't supposed to be for a younger audience, and Vincy Pop has made that clear for a long time. If she wants to make a series targeted to that age group one day, that's fine. However, she shouldn't have to change her series because parents are letting kids watch something they're not supposed to be watching. After complaining more about Angel Dust being a harmful stereotype, they discussed their biggest issue with Angel Dust and what made them stop watching the series. Before that, though, they made a comment that I've seen some people talk about it is worth addressing. I am a victim of this kind of abuse myself, and I don't owe you or anybody else watching an in-depth explanation of it. It's my story to tell, and I'm not going to tell it here. I'm bringing this up to make it clear that I have valid criticisms of this show and this character as a survivor myself. I want to make one thing clear about this video. While I disagree with Linus's comments, I'm in no way implying that I don't believe them when they say they've been a victim of abuse. I'll take their word for it because whether they are or not doesn't change my opinion of their complaints about Angel Dust, especially when they talked about the importance of having a character going through abuse like this. See, Vivzipop decided to make Angel Dust a victim of sexual assault. 
His recovery is a plot line in the show, and I don't have an issue with this on paper. Not only do I think it's important to represent male victims of abuse, but also queer men who were victims of it. Men, both gay and straight, have been victims of sexual assault, and it's something that hasn't been properly recognized in society. Before this, I brought up how they were complaining about Angel Dust being a negative stereotype, and that one of the reasons was because he's hypersexual. Now, I admit I'm not a victim of sexual abuse. But one of the comments I've seen in a response to Limus was people saying Angel Dust was hypersexual because he's a victim of that. I didn't want to use a random tweet as reference, so I did my own research to comment on this. I found a few websites discussing this, including the one on screen from ISSM.info. ISSM, or the International Society for Sexual Medicine, was founded in 1978 and studies the medicine of human sexuality. The article I'm showing on screen is related to the effects sexual abuse can have on a person, starting with the first line. Sexual abuse at any age may predict hypersexuality in both men and women, researchers report in Journal of Sexual Medicine. However, the association is stronger in men who have experienced abuse as children and adolescents slash adults. The article goes on to say this, hypersexual individuals experience sexual urges and behaviors that are difficult to control, causing great distress. Sexual thoughts and actions may be so frequent and intense that they interfere with a person's ability to work and manage everyday life. Relationships often suffer. My point in bringing this up is to return to Lyman's complaining about Angel Dust being a negative stereotype. Again, I agree what he's doing is negative, but that's the point. He has these flaws for a reason, and complaining about it and just saying it's only a negative stereotype is missing the point of Angel Dust as a character. They see a negative stereotype. I see a victim of abuse who engages in destructive behavior because of their abuse. This is ironic because Linus praises episode 4 for showing the abuse and how it reflects on what the porn industry does to people. The one good thing I have to say about the writing for this episode is that a lot of this abuse is comparable to the real-life abuse that the porn industry conducts on their actors. And to give credit where credit is due, the show does a good job at portraying that, even if it's a little over the top. However, it's immediately done away when they get into what follows after that scene. The song Poison is just Angel Dust singing about being abused and how he is helpless to it. Is it a sad melodramatic song with slow and meaningful instrumentals? No, it's a techno dance song that removes any sort of seriousness that the song may have. It doesn't help that the music video has scenes of Angel Dust essentially being abused right in between scenes of him dancing like it's a Kesha music video. So full disclosure here, I'm not a fan of the song Poison. Not for the reasons Lyman states here, I'm just not a fan of the genre they use for the song. However, I think the genre works in its favor, despite Lyman thinking the opposite. Things are done intentionally in a series, regardless of how small they might be. The way a character talks, their outfit, even their color pattern are all done for a reason. That also includes why a song is made the way it is. Now, I can either assume it's supposed to be a dance number for everyone to want to dance to, or I can look deeper and ask why these choices were made here. And like Angel does, the song is an act. Angel does his singing and dancing like he's enjoying everything. However, when you look closer, you see him looking scared and hear the lyrics that say Angel is putting on an act. It just rubs me the wrong way that Limus makes this comment afterward but says Poison isn't allowed to be like that. And look, I get that there are songs out there with serious lyrics and messages that sound upbeat and cheerful. Again, it feels like Limus doesn't take a deeper look, it just assumes the song was supposed to glamorize the things that it's doing the opposite for. There are multiple scenes in which Angel shows his discomfort, and other lyrics tell you that he isn't enjoying this. Yes, this song is upbeat, but that's because Val is telling him to look happy and do what he says. Otherwise, Angel will face the consequences. Moving on, Lyman starts to complain about Angel's self-destructing behavior. Angel Dust's way of coping with it is undeniably unhealthy, and it really doesn't help when this unhealthy coping mechanism is so glamorized throughout the entire show that jokes are being made about it constantly. Let me make this very clear. This is not okay. Self-destructing is not how you deal with trauma, it will only make things worse. I'm saying this because it's very obvious the show is afraid to explicitly say it. So the show is afraid to show how unhealthy self-destructing is? 
Despite the fact you just showed a clip of Angel Dust admitting why they're self-destructing, I'm genuinely curious how a series could be scared to do that, despite the fact you just showed Angel Dust breaking down. The only thing that bothers me more is Linus' comment saying that the show glamorizes all of this. If your reaction to this episode is that the show is glamorizing any of the abuse and self-destructive behavior shown, you have a problem. I don't know how anyone could watch Angel being abused by Val, admit to disassociating to cope with what's going on in Poison, see them break down and explain why they're self-destructive, and come to the conclusion that this is glamorizing all of that. This is the kind of comment someone makes without taking a deeper dive into a series, and just views things on a surface level. And that's an issue when you want to be a reviewer on this platform. Unfortunately, things don't get much better when they talk about the other song in this episode, Loser Baby. Loser Baby isn't as bad as Poison, but it's still really tone deaf. It's another upbeat song, except this time it's about how your abuse isn't unique and you need to stop whining like a bitch and find company in other people who are in the same situation as you. What a great message to send. Loser Baby isn't Huss telling Angel Death that their issues aren't unique and that he should just suck it up. He's telling him that he understands Angel is going through something horrible and that he knows from experience that talking about it can help. From experience, talking about the problems I had, and still do, does help. It lets me know that I'm not alone, and makes it easier to open up when needed. I'll also add that it's harmful to hear Limus make this complaint about the song. It doesn't even work in this show's context, because it's comparing Angel and Husk's situations like they are at all similar. I'm sorry, but Angel just being forced into sexual actions against his will is not the same as Husk betting all on black and losing. The point isn't that they're supposed to go through the exact same thing to relate to each other. It's that they relate because their circumstances are similar. I agree that how they ended up in their situations and what they're forced to do is different, but it's still them forced into slavery for an overlord. Also, if Limus hadn't stopped watching when they did, they would have seen that Alistair wasn't afraid to threaten Hust the minute he got out of line. This happens in the next episode, Showing that while Alistair isn't shown to be as bad as Valentino, it's not exactly a good thing that Husk is forced to serve him. Anyway, we're close to the end of this. Lyris goes back to complaining about Angel Dust and making the same complaints about Poison. Then they make this complaint. Abuse is not something to be fetishized, and being a survivor of it is not an aesthetic, nor is it as glamorous as the show tries to make it look in musical numbers. It's something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. While Linus argues that the show glamorizes abuse with having a flawed character like Angel Dust and songs like Poison, the reality is it's the opposite. Angel has those flaws I mentioned earlier because he's a victim, but we see that sometimes happens to victims in similar situations. However, Angel isn't being praised because someone thought him being abused was hot. He's praised because people relate to him, and he improves as time goes on. Linus complained that Angel hits on Hus and constantly harasses him. I agree that this is bad. However, Angel stopped doing that to Husk after episode 4, and they become friends. Also, after their talk, we don't see Angel harassing people anymore about sleeping with them. The closest we get is him hitting on Lucifer when he meets him. And this is Sir Pentius and Angel Dust, our guests. Your Majesty! Hey, you short king. Considering how Angel used to act, I'd call this a definite improvement. Angel even gets questioned about not doing stuff he used to in episode 8. Last day of afterlife, and you're not off snorting a lion off some hunk's abs? Eh, you fucked one cannibal pool boy, you fucked them all. I guess you have changed. I know Lima said they stopped watching after episode 4 and didn't see that, but I'd argue that's precisely why you shouldn't judge Angel the way they did. Angel started with serious flaws, and he's working to fix them. We're also seeing him fix said flaws, thanks to having a healthy support system with Charlie's Hotel. I made this video because I disagree with Linus' comments and wanted to explain why I view Angel Dust as an inspirational character. I also relate to Angel Dust being a victim of abuse because I have a history of being abused too. It's not the same abuse as what Angel goes through, but that doesn't change the fact that he could be inspirational for anyone who's ever been a victim of abuse. That's why I'm happy that he exists and why I think he's a great character. I wanted to address another part of Linus' video, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to get into that. Also, I think it would be better to do a separate video on it. Again, I'm unsure if I will, 
but you might know what I'm talking about. For now, I'm leaving the topic here.